Well, good morning, everyone. It's Saturday. It's December 24th, Christmas Eve, and it's time for our final devotion of 2022. We are in uh, the very important chapter, Revelation chapter 12, and uh, we're going to be reading the whole chapter today. So this is going to be um, a lot of good theology for us, beginning at verse 1. A great and wondrous sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of twelve stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on his heads. His tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that he might devour her child the moment it was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into the desert to a place prepared for her by God, where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was Hurled, hurled down that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury, because he knows that his time is short. When the dragon saw that he had been hurled to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. The woman was given the two wings of the great eagle, so that she might fly to the place prepared for her in the desert where she would be taken care of for a time, times, and a half a time, out of the serpent's reach. Then from his mouth the serpent spewed water like a river to overtake the woman and sweep her away with a torrent. But the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of its mouth. Then the dragon was enraged for the woman and went off to make war against the rest of her offspring those who obey God's commandments and hold to the testimony of Jesus. All right, so it almost sounds like a fairy tale here, right? With with dragons and women in distress and women being pursued and interventions and the dragon being defeated at times. Uh, this is a description of the church of the New Testament era. So we, we clearly see the woman who would be representative of the church or Virgin Mary. She gives birth to a male child, which is Christ. Um, the devil, the dragon, uh, pursues the Christ, but he is taken up into heaven. And we believe this is in reference to his ascension. But then the dragon makes war on her offspring, which would be Christians, which would be those who are members of the church. And the dragon pursues them for this time period of 1,260 days. Now, 1260 uh, days is 42 months or three and a half years. And uh, it, it all refers to the same time period. Uh, the other time referent that's given is time, times, and half a time. So if you take time, which is one, and times, which is two, um, now you have three, and half a time, so then you have three and a half. So we believe that all of these time periods here, 1260 days, um, three and a half years, 42 months, all refer to the New Testament era. And by the New Testament era, I mean the time of Jesus' ascension up until the second coming. That that's the New Testament era. And then the Old Testament era is also uh, another three and a half. So that together, the three and a half of the Old Testament era and the three and a half of the New Testament era form seven, which is the number of God. And so the, the dragon pursues the woman, but God has a place prepared for her. Uh, in the desert, uh, the desert or the wilderness is a place uh, of testing. It's a place where the church exists between the ascension of Jesus and his second coming. And it's the place where we, we have the life of faith. 
you know, uh, the, uh, the desert for the Israelites was the place that they came to after they were uh, rescued from Egypt, but yet before they had come into the promised land. And so the wilderness for us, the desert for us is the same. It's the place where we are living our lives with God, where we are being pursued by the dragon, where we're being tempted by the dragon, where we're being tested. And uh, it's, it's, like I said, the life of faith, the place of faith. When uh, we get to the promised land, which will be heaven, then we won't need faith anymore because we'll live with God by sight. And then, of course, Egypt or uh, being in bondage to sin was where we were before we were rescued, before the wilderness. So God has a plan for us to uh, save us from the land of slavery, to save us from the slavery of sin through the redemption of Christ, who leads us through the waters of the Red Sea in which we might say are the waters of baptism and uh, brings us into a journey into the wilderness where we live out our faith, uh, confidently awaiting the return of Jesus and the second coming when he comes to punish the dragon forever and to bring us into the promised land eternally. All right, let's continue now as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you, and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you, and give you his peace. Amen. All right, well, it's all Christmas stuff uh, for announcements for today. Um, we have Christmas Eve services happening this afternoon at 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. These will both be candlelight services, so hope you can attend. And then tomorrow we have a Christmas Day service happening at 9 a.m. It is going to be a communion service, and uh, there's going to be no Sunday school tomorrow. Now, a week from tomorrow is New Year's Day, January the 1st. So service times will be back to normal at 10.30 a.m. on January the 1st, and Sunday school will be back at 9.15 a.m. on January the 1st. So we hope that you can uh, join us and uh, we, we pray that you have a Merry Christmas as we reflect on the birth of our Savior and give thanks to God for salvation being given to us uh, in a baby who, who will grow up to be crucified and to die for sin and be raised to eternal life to give us that same promise. So again, Merry Christmas, everyone. Uh, there will be no daily devotions uh, happening after today, uh, but we will resume on Monday, January the 2nd. So please join us then. God bless the rest of your day.